Hello again, it's Dave here from Creative Guitar Lounge. Um, I did a little short the other day of uh, my first attempt ever of doing a loop with my new looper pedal, which is this um, little Lakato um, loop stage. Now, this video is going to be more about why I decided to get a looper, go into this whole uh, area of stuff, and why I chose this one, and actually how I'm planning to use it. I'll play the first attempt that I did uh, just after I got this. I kind of played around with it, obviously, as you do, for a little while. Got the hang of it and recorded uh, a loop with um, well three different parts to it. So there was a clean, picked, kind of delayed one chord, and then I played a, a, a lead line on top of that, and then a harmony line on top of that. So that's what it's. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> This is, just, this is a very basic looper, so that's all in mono. Because I guess the, the main reasons people buy these is for maybe busking or playing live. I mean, there's some pretty famous exponents of it, like um, Ed Sheeran, people like that at the moment who are doing a lot. And back in the day, Katie Tunstall was pretty famous for using a looper. She would sort of do percussion and sort of vocal loops and, and all sorts of things with it. So um, it can be quite a versatile thing. I got one because my partner and I, we do sort of fully produced um, music with, you know, drums and bass and, and overdubs and overlays and keyboards and, and all sorts of stuff. But we also quite enjoy just playing uh, the two of us live. We're recording live and we're planning to do um, a little set of that. We've already done one, which I'll link to in the description, but we're planning to do more. And the problem we have, not really a problem, is my partner um, plays either acoustic guitar or keyboards and sings when we when we work that way. She's also a really good bass player. So we kind of thought um, it would be useful to have a little bit more in the background if we could do it. And the reason about this particular looper pedal is because it has nine different banks and it can record, uh, well, nine different, you could record nine different loops and they can be, you can have a total of 40 minutes with this little pedal recorded into it. And you can also import and export loops. So if you create a loop in this, you can actually export it onto your computer and save it in a file. Uh, similarly, if you have something like, I don't know, drums or, or any kind of loop uh, on your computer, you can take that down into this pedal. And then you've got these loops that you can just trigger whenever you want them. So that was um, what kind of appealed to me when I was looking into which 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 looper should I get as as a looping beginner, and you know what what one is going to give us the features that I'm most likely to use, so that was the first step, and this one it just appealed to me from that point of view. A because we could do the computer thing, we could put together in in um, Logic Pro, and say a drum loop and a bass line, for example, or uh, some keyboards, or all three of those things. Bearing in mind they're always going to be in mono. But this is for a live performance, so um, not really such a, a great big deal. And we could also um, probably run it back through until... There's all sorts of things that we could do, but basically this pedal had the kind of functions that I wanted. Now, um, uh, there are lots of videos out there on this pedal. It's been around for a few years. It's been really well received, that's why I bought it. So in terms of, of actually using it, um, if you want more, on that, let me know, but I would suggest you just look at one of them, just key that in to Google or to YouTube, and you'll find lots of videos with people telling you actually how it's used. But it's pretty simple, in a nutshell, it does come with instructions, but um, you tap it to start recording your loop, it records the loop, and then you tap it to stop the loop, and then it just plays that loop, then you double tap it to stop that. If you just want to play it, you just click it, once and it plays and then click it twice to stop. If you want to overdub, you click it once to start it and then click it a second time to record your next dub on top of that. And there are, you can do that unlimited times. Bear in mind the sound quality is going to deteriorate a little bit um, and that you only have limited control over the various volumes. But um, it's like that simple to use. 
And the other good thing about this, another feature that we liked, is the nine bank things as I've described. And obviously you could you could record loops for nine different songs, for example. But you could also have verse, chorus, bridge as separate loops because this has a little switch in it that enables you to go backwards and forwards from your banks of loops. So you could you could do it that way and that is probably what we will do because we're probably going to be recording these live songs one at a time so I don't need to have lots of songs stored in it. They can be in the computer and downloaded to it as we go. So we could have three or four songs though. Um, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, solo, whatever, into it like that. So it lends itself to that. It also um, has a tuner function, so if you press, the, there, there's an up and down button on the pedal. If you press them both together, it goes to a tuner, which is, you know, reasonably accurate. It's kind of a backup tuner, but it does the job. Um, so, kind of cool. There is actually an additional pedal um, which enables you to do that as a foot switch, so you can go up and down the banks. Obviously, that would make it much easier to do that rather than having to do it with a finger. And I've actually bought one of those. I found one of those on eBay for... 10, 10 pounds, that's a no brainer. So that that's actually arriving tomorrow. So um, we'll get more into it and I'll do more videos on this as we start to use it more. So far I've just done that little experiment that you've heard. So um, the next thing is, where does it go? Because one of the things I hadn't actually thought about with loopers, I mean, it's pretty obvious when you know, but they're actually recording devices. So it's recording exactly what goes into it. So. I'm set up, as I've said in previous videos, with my amp here, with uh, a GT100 effects processor, which is set up with the four cable systems. So the delay and modulation effects are going into the effects loop of the amp and the distortion, wah-wah, uh, compression, those sorts of effects are going straight into the front of the amp. You can do that with separate pedals quite easily, but you can also do it with these if they have an effects loop in the actual processor itself, as well as the amp. So that's what I've got. So um, a little bit of experimentation discovered that the place, I want the looper to record what I'm hearing from the amp. So it's at the end of the chain, basically. So with this four cable setup, the looper needs to go between the send. It needs to go basically into the effects return of the amplifier, so the cable that comes out of this that goes into the effects return on the amp, I just have to put the looper in there, so it just involves getting another cable and kind of splitting it, if you like, and putting it in there. That way, the looper isn't just recording the clean guitar. If I put the guitar straight into it, that's all I would get. You know, I would hear the different sounds as I changed um, sounds on here. I would hear that through the amp, but the looper would just be recording a clean guitar which is not at all what I want. So um, that's where it has to be. So you kind of have to bear that in mind with these things that it, it's recording exactly the signal that goes into it. And it's making a recording of that and then just playing it back when you when you play the loops that you've made. So um, those are the kind of things that I wanted to share about it. But uh, I can say I'm, I'm not sponsored, I'm not an affiliate for Lakato or anything. I've, but I have bought... There, uh, as I've, I think I've done a, sorry, not these, the um, guitar wireless system, which I'm still using, and I've found that's really excellent. So they're really good, um, in my two experiences, as very inexpensive but very high quality um, manufacturers of really useful kit for us guitarists. So I um, hope that's been useful. Leave me your comments below, um, you know, any questions, I'll, I'll answer them. I will do more on these as we start to get into it, but I just wanted to do a little um, first impressions thing, really, on the Lakato loop stage. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed as yet and you want to see more of this kind of thing, uh, do think of uh, subscribing, it really helps the channel out. Uh, anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.